Well, welcome to the latest edition of Trojan Football Talk. I'm your host, Tom Vartani, and today's show brought to you by AmeriCue Credit Union for every day, for everything, located next to Little Caesars at 3944 Route 281 in Cortland. Part of Cortland Voice, the exclusive media partner of Trojan Football Talk. For all your local news and sports in Cortland County at no cost to you, check out CortlandVoice.com. By the Royal Auto Group on Route 281 in Cortland, the home of no hassle, no razzle-dazzle. Check them out at RoyalAutoGroup.com. By Yemen Real Estate at the entrance to Yemen Park off I-81, exit 11 in Cortland. By DJ Philly C. Make your wedding, party, or event extra special with the best DJ in the area. Contact DJ Philly C. at 607-745-4346. By Nikki C.'s Hometown Pizzeria and Meatball Shop on Route 281 next to Hobos in Homer. Find them online for fast, secure ordering or call 607-749-5300. They have a unique menu with dietary specific options. Nikki C's, your grab and go specialists. By Graftex, located on Elm Street in Cortland. Founded in 1984, they provide custom screen printing and embroidery for teams and local businesses. Graftex continues its dedication to servicing customers' needs for innovative graphic designs, custom and printed apparel, and quality service. They are easy to contact at 1 800 417 7791. By Seven Valley Agency at 18 Tompkins Street in Cortland for all your personalized insurance services. Give them a call at 607-753-1821 or check them out online at sevenvalleyagency.com. Seven Valley Agency, where your money matters, our advice counts. By Isaac Merker Studio, handling all your photographic needs in Central New York since 1982 at 74 Hamlin Street in Cortland. Give them a call at 607-756-0849 or check them out online at isaacburger.com or on their Facebook page. By M&D Deli, located on Central Avenue in Cortland, open Monday through Friday from 7 a.m. till 3 p.m. M&D has breakfast sandwiches, bakery items, and daily lunch specials. They are also available for catering. Check out their Facebook page for more information. Stop by or call 607-753-2GO. That's 753-8646. And look for their new food truck in the spring of 2022. By Crop Growers LLP, the first choice in crop insurance located in Homer. Contact KC Slade at 607-591-2460 for more information. And by the First National Bank of Dryden at 12 South Main Street in Homer. Safe, secure, and locally owned for all your banking needs. For more information, stop by, call 607-662-4179, or check them out online at drydenbank.com. Well, once again, we're talking to head coach Gary Pacelik, and uh, it was, uh, well, let's put it this way, mission accomplished to the point when you start a season, you want to get to the Dome. Well, the Trojans have done that off their 62-49 to 49 <laughs> win over VVS. And typically, it was a close VVS game, but not kind of... Uh, the defense didn't have quite as much to do with the uh, the, the who went on as, uh, as the offenses did. But uh, Coach was kind of, you know, like we said, you only had, you know, two wins coming into the season against VVS, and you beat them twice this year. What, first time ever there the second week of the season. That was at that 30-21 to 21 game. Right. And uh, But now the more important one, the rematch, is where, where that, that kind of takes me back to the woman I talked to on the way. Well, at least they didn't put up 62 points against us that they were worried about that in that second game of the year because it was their first game in year second. Right. Well, the 62 points came in the uh, sectional game. and uh, But it was a wild game. But even that, that score doesn't indicate how close this game was. Yeah, oh, it was it was absolutely a close game. Um, I had mentioned to some of the other media people who asked to interview me earlier in the week. And by the way, thanks for having me. Uh, <laughs> but the deal was this. I, somebody said, predict the score. And I said, this is going to be a back and forth. Maybe the team with the ball last wins. I said that on Wednesday. And I also said, if I had to predict a score, 50 to 40. Both of us have players and, and players who can dominate on the offensive side of the ball. And I said, I could see us struggling to stop each other. Um, I said, I predict 50 to 40 homer win. And uh, I wasn't right, but it was a more realistic picture than I think most people would have thought. Now, certainly not happy with what happened on D, but again, you got to remember, we're coaching high school teenagers. And uh, when you put it, the emotion of playing once a week into the game of football, it's just, uh, you know, would I have liked to won, you know, 40 to 12? Absolutely. But the deal is this. In the moment, as the coach who's done, you know, been around a little bit, you stay calm. You don't, you, you show your players, hey, if you're going to tell them, they have to understand we just have to keep battling because 
one of us is going to make a choice to take advantage of a break to take over. And fortunately, I mean, if you look at special teams, um, you know, we, we stayed calm as a coaching staff. We kept coaching the kids. We were disappointed in some things we were doing on our kickoff. It wasn't quite going where we wanted to. Well, if you look at the total game, the old special teams rule, I say, you know, mathematically one third is less than one half. But the third of the game called special teams dictates more than half of the outcomes of a, any football game at any level. It always seems like in battles that are back and forth or close, suddenly something big happens in special teams that allows one team to grab the final stage of momentum and win. And, and again, that's exactly what happened. End of the first half, they did it. Here we are, we're up a couple scores, we're looking good, we got 26 points on the board, and uh, we, 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 we only have two minutes to go in the half. Next thing you know, they're winning 28-26 because they recovered a kick after they scored on a drive, and they recovered and scored again, and needless to say, now they're up 28-26. So for the second time this season, they're beating us at halftime. It's, it's 20, as Sam Sorensen said on his interview, it was only by two, but it was 28-26. So you go in at halftime, you know, the closer the game, the more calm you have to be when you're working with your players, in my opinion. And uh, we just said, here are the things that we're struggling with on D, simply put. And if we don't win one-on-one -on -one battles, if we don't communicate to each other pre-snap so we know that every – because we need you all to be able to play full speed. You know, number one's an outstanding runner. They throw the ball very, very well with that quarterback back. I, I said, guys, this is going to be one of those who – who reacts to adversity best is going to win this game. For us, fortunately, think of uh, Jeff Stauber. Week before, he had a mistake in the game that, you know, he would make uh, one in a hundred times, and he felt so bad, and we said, no, you, you made a mistake because you were out there on the field. You, you didn't do it on purpose, and your teammates had your back. We stopped him. Well, who comes up with the huge recovery? Not a planned onside. It was just a kick it to the open area thing, hoping maybe they would mishandle it. Well, he flew down the field, he covers the ball, we score, and suddenly that slams momentum in our direction. And, and for the rest of the game, we controlled it in that fourth quarter, put up, what, 22 points yeah. in the fourth to win the thing 62 to uh, 49. So, you know, uh, th that's the excitement. It's the excitement of football in general. But when you're talking about teenagers that are just playing because they love the game, you know, you couldn't ask for more. Even the VVS coach, who didn't have a lot to say after the game other than good game, he reached out the next morning and said, man, do you have a nice team? He, you know, because everybody knows we're, we're, we don't have the talent level that we had in the spring. We don't have the talent level we had at the beginning of the season. We thought, um, you know, when you, when you got – the most probable all CNY player of the year after the VVS game two, not able to play. Um, and we got another young man who, who is be an every down player for us somewhere, um, you know, going to have to sit this season out to get a hundred percent healthy for basketball. Um, you know, we, we're doing, our, our players are playing their butt off and doing a great job of making reality out of the team concept. When you play like a team, in this sport, this is the one sport you can overcome superior talent. I believe a hundred percent there were a couple athletes on that team, number one and number 22, um, that we don't have anyone that talented on our team. We do not. And they were big, strong in the line of scrimmage. And, you know, we, were, we looked the same on paper. We've got 19 seniors. They got 19 seniors. You know, it was a match like uh, I think it was Spectrum News or News One now they call themselves, whatever. They made this their big, you know, this was going to be their slugfest of the week and, and their matchup of the week. I forget the grand name they give it, but... But so, you know, it's it just a fun night, ultra fun for Homer because we came out on top. And as I said, their coach reached out to me the next morning with a note and just said, you have a real nice team. And he did ask for a favor, though. He wanted our film because they had some camera issues. Our cameraman actually helped them fix their camera. And uh, so they got it, but they didn't get the whole thing. So we, we shared with them the film. So they have it for their archives, you know, for prep down the road. And the court. You know, unfortunately, the, the, the bad part about it, it got, did get a little bit chippy near the end of the game. Yes. It got chippy. They had a couple of ejections. I think when the fact that they knew they weren't going on, a couple of the kids got ejected. And, yep. But as intense as it was, and, of course, Gary was pretty animated on the sidelines more than I've ever seen him, too, with the officials a few times, which we, when Randy and I, Austin, talked, you know, comparing some stats and different things, we are just going, how do we go from a first and ten to a holding penalty to a first and ten again? When it should have been like first and sixteen, and the yeah, referees, I don't—they're good, some good guys, but they weren't quite on point well, with some things. But it's in their defense, here's what's happening: is it's a mixed crew. There were three yeah. Syracuse chapter officials, three Mohawk chapters. In the semis and finals, you do a mixed crew. It'll be flopped in the dome. It'll be three Mohawk, two Syracuse. That is the biggest advantage of being.
being the number one seed over the number two seed in the dome. That that, that board will supply three. So they're not used to working together, even though it's still officiating. Yeah. Um, the reality is is that um, the holding penalty is a spot foul. Yeah. So it's conceivable if you held, let's say that you ran the ball 20 yards downfield, and it was you know it was second and four. Yeah. All right, and there's a you know you you gain 20, but at the 16 yard gain point there was a hold. Yeah. You could mark it back; it'd still be first down. Yeah. And that I think, to be honest with you, where the flag was, I don't know if we got they they picked it up and forgot where it was. I think it really should have been not first and 10, but like first and 13 or something like yeah. that. Yeah, it was first and 16. Cause it they, should have been first and 16. A, yeah, because they, yeah. they, they threw the flag at the 30 and it was back right. to the 20, but it came first and 10 at the 20 instead yeah. of first and, and 16. I, I hate to admit it. I think that was, uh, you know, I hate for them because it wasn't intentional. No. I just think they either picked their flag up and didn't remember where they put it. Yeah. Um, so we did gain a little advantage on that. Again, it was still first down. and Right. First 16, first and 10, the proof is in, in the pudding, right, when you taste it? You would have got the it proof in the pudding is a taste. Yeah. Uh, how many times did we punt Friday night? None. Zero. And they only we, punted once. Yeah, and the only thing that hurt it, the only drive we did not score on, if I'm not mistaken, young Coach P pointed out to our players at half, guys, the only drive we didn't score in this half was the one where we ran out of clock at the end of the half. So understand, we only team, we said this during the week, when we look at this, we're evenly matched, guys, but ultimately the team that can stop Homer this week is Homer. Um, you know, you talk about the emotion. They have an outstanding, I mean, they got a great roster like us, 34 kids. They got 19 graduating, but they got 15 coming back. We got 14 coming back on ours. So we're going to be okay next year. We're going to find a way to play good football, these two schools, you know. But that class at VVS and our class at Homer are two classes that many people would have predicted, hey, they could be in the final four of Section 3. And, you know, that's the, what we just taken as the next step to our second primary goal. Um, you know, we said we want to be league champs. We respect the fact that we have a division we want to win. And we were league champs. That was goal significant goal number one in the win-loss category. Um, goal number two is to win the Section 3 crown again. And and uh, we're, we're there. Now we got to do the work to get the job done. And if we earn that goal, then, section, then goal number three is let's win a New York State championship on the field with the tournament in place for the first time in school history. But uh, we can't worry about that. Right. And, and, again, I want to clarify one other thing. I get frustrated, and I know I mentioned this on a previous podcast. Our kids are in the States right now. This is the state yep. tournament. Um, we actually, depending on the level of football and how many schools there are, Class B – in the tournament has 64 teams enter the tournament. Uh, no, that's not quite right. 60. Because Section 4 does not do a quarterfinal round. Right. But so we're, the minute you enter that quarterfinal round, you're playing for the state championship. All states that have state tournaments, if I'm not mistaken, play at least a five-week tournament. And we just won the first round of that concept. So like it or not, we're, we're, from our perspective, we're two weeks into the state tournament. Yep. And and you get a re, you get a uh, sectional title. The following week you play for what was referred to as a regional title. You know what I'm saying? So the deal is is that um, I th I wish more people would accept or, or acknowledge the fact that it's pretty cool that a school like Homer, New York, can find a way to keep getting into the state tournament many more years than not lately. And uh, that's the effort of the players. Uh, I said it. It didn't get put in the, the television interviews the other night. Or, but let's face facts. You know, we are fortunate. We coaches, although we have a lot of experience and we, we love this and we're having so much fun working with these guys, the deal is they win the game. You know, if 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 Jeffrey, if we don't stay persistent and keep playing ping pong, score, 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 and if Jeff Stauber doesn't out hustle their team to the ball, we're we're not talking today about a win. You know, so they win the game. It's what they get done on the field, what they get done during the work week to get on that field that wins the game for us. The guys on the sideline yelling screen when they're attempting to throw a screen, they make a difference in the game. And I think people need to know that, that every player makes a contribution, even if he doesn't get a down on that field. And they know it. We know it. I, I hope society does a better job of recognizing that. Yeah. Well, just to follow up about what I was leading up to, you know, about, you know, the trippiness that came. Yeah. A lot of the time during the game, there were guys, they, there were guys, they, they hammered each other. They, you know, drove each other getting into the ground. There was a lot of time where the guy who went, they, you know, whether it was a homer kid making a tackle on the VVS, get a right first, 
they were helping each other up, yep. and there's three or four of them uh, that gathered after the game, just you know, off to the side after the handshake, and just kind of talked to each other and stuff like you saw. I mean, so it's always it's a lot of respect, and it's just like you say, sometimes just the emotion takes over. At one point, yep. it all revolved around David Morris's uh, touchdown yep. and what happened to him there and everything. And well, the reality is, so. is, is I didn't quite get to it, but you're right. Um, based on scouting report, I'll bet money that one of those kids talking in that crowd was probably 22. Probably number one. Um, when we watch them, the, the beautiful thing, I said to people, there's 34 kids on the VVS roster. If you said take one, I'm taking number 22. He's an impact player who plays with heart on every phase of the game. He's their punter. He's their return guy that is, you know, the kid that can count on to make the, the big hustle play. Um, he is their go-to guy in offense when they need the big play. One is an amazing running back. He's only a junior. He's going to have a heck of a senior year. But 22 that Palmer kid, he plays every down like it might be his last down of the game, and he does it with class. I mean, you saw him pursue Sammy Sorensen, and, and he got to him, and Sam shoved him off a little. Well, then what did he do? That 22, Palmer resettled and went to tackle him, and Sam just stiff-armed him, shoved him to the ground, and got to the end zone anyways. But the reality is, uh, or got to the pile on anyways, uh, the reality is, though, that kid, you know, the heart of the size of a mountain, played with class. And, and the VVS team this year, both times we played them, our kids said they were hard-nosed, they were tough, they were a class act. On the negative side, the only thing is that reality I told you about. They really thought this was their team to get to the Dome, to win a Section 3 crown with so many experienced seniors, um, like us, 19 experienced seniors. And so I think that that adds to the frustration. They weren't they weren't angry at us. They were just sad that, the, yeah. that their season is over. And there's 19 seniors of that. I'll be stunned if more than one or two of their kids play at the college level. So they'll never put a football uniform on again. You'll never play a tackle football game ever again that means anything. And in the finality of that, I mean, you can go to the park and play pick up basketball, pick up lacrosse, pick up ba baseball. You can't go and play pick up football. Yeah. And, uh, and so... You know, that was I stole that from a letter a mom wrote nationally. It got circulated on uh, yeah. social media, and uh, you know, the finality hurts. And again, I'm not a, I'm not a big you know crier. I used to be as a younger coach. I used to say, guys, I don't want you crying after a football game. You know, now I had to adjust my attitude on that a little bit. If you're a senior and you lose and it's your last game, it's okay to love the sport so much to have that kind of emotional passion. But if you give your best effort and you go out and someone whips your backside, you don't cry. Hey, I, gave my, I sincerely gave my best effort. They happen to be better than us today. That's, that's okay. That's, that's why we play because we're going to see if we can get the best out of us. And sometimes the best out of us even has a few ups, upsets in the, in the picture, you know. So, so uh, you know, that's what happened with their emotion at the end of the yeah. game. The finality was just frustrating and, and yeah. saddening. Yeah. But like I said, I'm trying to keep the positive. There goes, even despite what was yeah. going on. There were you could see the sportsmanship part and the respect, mm -hmm. and like you said, it's just two hard fought teams that have, yep. have history of you know a good some good you know good yeah. hard physical games. And I mean, that turned out. And ironically, you know, VVS won the toss. It looked like I think they won the toss, and they decided to kick off. They decided they, they took the ball. Oh, that's right. They took they the, took the ball. Right. They didn't. They didn't mm -hmm. say, well, okay, well, so you got what you wanted. You wanted your defense on the field anyway. Yep. First, you like that and. That was the only real mistake they made all night. They threw up, uh, you know, an interception on like on a third down pass. Uh, Hunter Realman, uh, not yeah, Hunter made the uh, interception yes, and uh, yes. set up your first touchdown. So you know, you know, not even two minutes into the game, Sammy Sorensen rumbles twenty eight yards and yes. Uh, then then the other bugaboo of the night is two point conversion weren't, weren't pretty, but you well, ended up getting four out of nine. I think four out of nine at the end. But it, yes, it was it was a long those last three three of the came like three out of four at the end of the game. That it's a long time getting those two point conversion. But I mean, but still you were up right away, and, and uh, so you were up after off a turnover, and then they came back and you know put a you know and, and then they got their first a big play. I think a, I think it was a big play by Wheeler on a run maybe mm -hmm. or, or something, and then he. Eventually ended up scoring on an 18-yard run, and, uh, they kick, and they're just deadly kicking all night long. I mean, oh, they're kickers. Well, they yeah. actually have two outstanding kickers on that roster, but yeah. number 43, I think, was the one young man that yeah. kicked the other night. Falkenmeyer. Yeah, yeah Falkenmeyer. He, he really um, he is one heck of a, a kicker. Um, he drills it. If you look at our score, I mean, we scored 62. We would have had to have been 8 for 9 on one-point kicks. Um, to score 62 points. And our thought going in is, for the same reason they took the ball, both of us coaches knew this could be uh, 
who can score the most because we may struggle to stop each other a little bit. We knew that going into the game. Both teams did because we had players who could make big plays. We knew we had that that grind mentality where the big plays keep occurring every fourth or fifth. You know, and I'm big, big play. I don't mean 60-yard touchdowns. I mean, you know, the 21-yard run, the 17-yard run, the things that just keep moving the chains. They had the big play pass yardage. They were, what, 2 for 14 or 2 for 15 game one. Much better passing this time against us. Um, you know, we were, we were playing both man, uh, we were playing one look with a man scheme and another look with his own. And in both cases, we got hurt. Um, several of the things we can correct, but there was a couple of cases. There was a move put on one of our corners that literally our corner, he didn't fall to the ground, but darn near did because it was such a good move by Palmer. And uh, when he stuck his foot in the ground and broke, our kid almost fell over. That's how, how convincing it was that he thought he was going to go to the outside and he ended up going to the inside. And uh, so, you know, they took that ball thinking, we're going to get off, we're going to score first, we're going to set the tone, and we're going to make sure we always outscore them. So if we have a big lead at half, I mean, they had, they had a, a lead at half, 21-14 the first game, but they wanted a bigger lead, and I think that drove them to want that ball to start the game. So, uh, you know, made, made for an exciting adv- adventure for sure. I was pleased with our defense in that first series. Again, f- stopped them. Um, did they punt it all all night? I don't even one. remember. One time, right? They had one punt. So think about it. The pick and the, and the, and the punt. Uh, you know, you can say what you want about look at the score. We Defensive advantage to Homer in the big picture. And that's some the defensive advantage and the critical momentum changing play on the kickoff. That's why we won. Ultimately, if you got to point to a couple things that were significant in making sure we won, they, they were the items. And then, of course, uh, Jay Calibro with a one-yard uh, sneak there, uh, minute 42 left in the first quarter, gave you guys the 14-7 to lead in that game. Then the second quarter, again, you know, again, it was, uh, you know, another Sammy, Sammy Sorensen run, three yards, uh, you know, gave you guys, you know, a, you know, a two tu- you know, a two touchdown lead almost at that point. But then the VVS came back and scored. Uh, yes. Just a short six-yard pass, this one uh, from a, uh, you know, from Whitman to Palmer. That was a short one for six yards. And uh, but then you guys come right back against Sorensen. Six touchdowns on the night gets his th- third of the night, an eight-yard run with 102 to go in a half. So you, you know, you guys are thinking you'll go 21-14. I think it was that about that was like made 21-14 or 20 to 14 actually, or whatever it was. Yes. Um, so it was 20 know, because it, the halftime score was 28-26. So it was 20 to 14. And then then. The big yeah, they usually say Bryce Palmer. He like it's ironic. Their stats. I saw their stats online. I got a couple guys, different numbers, different di- couple different guys, and what they had, but pretty much yardages were dead on. But uh, yeah, like you said, you know, that Bryce Palmer. He caught nine catches for 199 yards, and all four touchdown passes were yes were to him. And he, he you know he hooked up on that 56 yard one, you know, with 45 seconds to go in the half, and you go you know so that they said, well okay, it's going to be a little bit closer at halftime and. Then the only mistake we made all night, Homer made all night. <laughs> and, like, and I don't think it was, I don't think it's been so much a mistake because the rest of them they kind of did that all night long. The Homer guys, you know, the return guy, wait for the ball to come to him. This one is just, oh, well, I got to make sure I get it. Dove for the ball, it kicked away from him. Then off another Homer guy, and yep. he recovered it yep. and scored. You know, just you know. 23 seconds later, another 15 yards. Yeah, pass so under 30 Whitman. seconds, they scored two yeah. touchdowns. Take the lead 28 26 at half. Right. You know, um, so, you know, th- again, that's why you play it. The only people that don't make mistakes, I said, are the ones who don't get out on the field. Right. Uh, you know, us coaches made mistakes. We admit them at halftime. We say, hey, you know, I, I um, you know, we, we, make adjustments and they're not you know these huge oh we're going to change scheme no it's like doggone it we got to remind him that the minute you know like there's a certain look we have where sam has to be alert to the pass game deep sam Sorensen is our middle linebacker should we have to be out in a coverage where there's nobody behind him but the minute someone's behind him they communicate to him hey i'm here i'm free you're and then he goes back and he gets to adjust his distance away from the line to play all linebacker only on the down and uh we twice they communicated, but the movement closer to line didn't occur. So instead of tackling him for a two-yard gain, he tackled him for a five-yard gain. And, and, and that's on us as coaches. The first time it happens, hey, you see it, coaches? Hey, we yell over to him, don't forget. When you get the call, I'm free, you know then you step up and go back to your normal linebacker depth. Well, we missed it twice before we caught on. You know, we, and shame on us coaches. We should have gotten that. Now, we got it corrected. But the deal is, you know, we need to correct it right away. We see it one time, and and, uh, and don't get me wrong, we're caught up in the emotion of the game, and we're, like I said, when things are most hectic, that's when it's the job of the head coach to stay calm, which we were. We were like, relax, here's what's going on. And it might be this all night. I said to the kids, 
I predicted this. It might be a back and forth. And I don't want it to be, but it might be. So we have to stay calm, keep trying to correct the mistakes we're making, do a better job of winning our one-on-one -on -one battles, and uh, and that'll be the key for the rest of the way in this tournament. Teams that can win the one-on-one -on -one battles are going to be the teams that come together as a team and uh, win ball games in the playoffs. And uh, that's just after what the third quarter was, back and forth. Uh, Homer took the lead, Sammy Sorensen, the two-yard run, uh, 7 6 to go, Homer back in front. Next possession, VGS has it. Wheeler breaks free for a 33-yard run. They're back in front. 3.20 to go in the uh, quarter. Sammy on a one-yard run. That one he got down to the pylon yep. and that didn't yep. quite get in. Um, put Homer back on top. And then with 13 seconds left in the quarter, Wheeler broke off you know, another nice march by, uh, by uh, VVS. And uh, Wheeler from two yards out with 13, se left, sec 13 seconds left in that third quarter. And now they're back up on two going into the fourth quarter. And so, I mean, so you, you were get, everybody was getting, and I, at that point, I was telling people, whoever has the ball last is going to win this ball game. That's just the way it, it felt, whoever had the last possession. But then, it, we, like you said, got into that fourth quarter. And ironically, these two, the two semifinals mirrored each other. When I looked at the line score for Tech, they played three out of four quarters very good yes. against New Hartford. New Hartford scored 22 points in the second quarter. Right. Which opened up their distance, and they went on to like a 49-20 to 20 win or something. So mm -hmm. they won, you know, but it was a 22-point quarter. This is the first time I think this year Homer's put up 22 points in the fourth quarter. Because right. one, one, you had to have the starters in there the whole game just because mm -hmm. that's Several of the way games, it was. Yeah, we were fortunate to not have to put starters out there. And we weren't trying to, right. you know, run the score up or something. So, But then, but then it, the time time consumption started working out well. It was a nice, you know, 7.44 to go in the game. Uh, uh, David Moore scored on a 20, broke free on a 26-yard yes. run. Then that was the, uh, the, the, their one miscue on special teams all night. You know, like you said, it wasn't a miscue. It was just I dropped the ball. And it was, like I said, I, since I'm sitting in the stands now. I could, you could see, I saw a star right outside. I just, just saw him going. I said, nobody's going to touch Jeffrey, are they? And he just, he, he just went right down there and fell on that ball. And uh, Well, and, and give credit to Jeffrey because on the opening kickoff, we have been, we are constantly working to try to get the best 11 players who've earned the right to be on the field, on the field, um, and we had Braden Marsh and Jeffrey on that side of the field. And Marsh is the contained player, and Jeffrey's the guy that has the green light to just go directly to the football, no lane responsibility, just get to the ball. Well, they didn't do that on the first kick. Didn't communicate to each other pre-kick. Um, we didn't. We were fortunate they didn't get a bigger return on the opening kickoff because there were two huge alleys on that half of the field. Um, so we corrected that as coaches, and you can see it on film. The rest of the game, they both did a great job with their jobs. And Jim Witten said to to uh, Jeff Stauber, "Guess what? Now that we got this right." you're going to get one of these. You're going to get one of these open space kicks. And uh, sure enough, he did in that fourth quarter. And uh, that was the final significant momentum changer that, uh, that got us through the win. And that led to the six-yard touchdown run by David Morris. Uh, just uh, 30, uh, 39 seconds after the previous, his previous yes. touchdown. And then that's when he got hurt on. Yep. And uh, hopefully he'll be available. I know he came out. Everybody's going, oh, dude, I saw how they twisted him. And people were going, did he, did it was his, it's his leg or his knee or something. I said, I don't no, know. No, no. Then watching him walk off, so he's walking good. I said, I, 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 wouldn't bet, I wouldn't doubt that his head hit the carpet and he just felt. The, the initial hit head. when he started to break out, not the one at the goal line, the initial hit, it just off to the side, there was helmet to helmet contact. And, uh, you know, and, and that's, that's what causes, think about it, your helmets are, are, I mean, they're amazing, the helmets these kids wear. And, and guess what? The concussion rate in football at our level is unbelievably low, maybe never safer in the history of the game because of the way everyone's teaching tackling. But it just so happened in the heat of the moment, the, the VVS kid's helmet right smashed into the helmet of David, and I think that that made him a little bit, he didn't know it at the moment, he just kept running the ball, but when he hit the ground, he's like, oh, shoot, I'm, I'm a little dizzy here. And uh, so we were going to be ultra careful, ultra cautious, and respectful of concussion protocol and all that. So, But David felt great yesterday. He went to a visit to Alfred State University. He'll get evaluated on Monday, and um, you know it'll be up to a doctor to say that, A, he didn't have a concussion, or B, if he did, then we go through the protocol. And if there's no setbacks in the week, he'll be able to play Saturday. Um, um, but we will make sure 100% that the protocol is follow, followed because uh, you don't ever, they're, they're young kids, you don't ever want to take a risk, you know, that would be unnecessary. And uh, But, you know, it was great to hear him. He was loved his college visit. He had a lot of fun. He really, Alfred State is where he went and visited yesterday, and I, I have a, my brother went there. And, and he kind of said a lot of the same things. I remember my brother saying back in, in, the, in the early 80s mm -hmm. about the place. So I was happy for him that he had such a good visit to Alfred State yesterday.
So with seven minutes to go, Homer, you know, got you know the two straight touchdowns, you know, gives you that little cushion you needed. Yep. Uh, VVS, you know, no quit. They came down 525. Uh, again, a 20 yard pass this time. Whitman to uh, Palmer. <laughs> uh, no, no, that's after that was Rodney caught that one. That's the, yeah, the one Rodney, was he in bounds. Was he not yep. in bounds on the far sideline? And number 11. Yeah, yeah. yeah you, I, I couldn't tell. You know, it was. Listen, on the far sideline corner end zone. The reality is this: that right, that's the one you're talking about. Yeah. It was an ama- It was great coverage. You know, I love it when people say, "Oh, we got bur- we didn't get beat." It was beautiful coverage. I mean, that was a major league. Unbelievable pitch and catch. The quarterback's throw couldn't have been any route, so we intercepted it. Our defensive player is right there. The kid catches the ball and gets one toe inbounds. And in high school, you only have to touch down with one foot. And if he wasn't as tall as he is, if he wasn't as good an athlete as it, never would have happened. But so you can say what you want. That was a kid from VVS making a great play. It wasn't even bad defense. It was great defense. It just so happened he snuck it in a game of an inch. Literally yeah. an inch. And the sad thing is they flagged our players, said that he swore at the official. And, and when they told me the name, I'm like, I got a roster of 33. He'd be in the bottom three to ever even say a bad word, period. Occurred. And uh, well, I, 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 I couldn't say conf- might have been saying it to himself because he, he wasn't even doing that. He yeah. said, I don't know what they heard. He goes, but coach, I will, I will look you in the eye and tell you yeah. I did not say a swear word because you know how you are. You don't believe in that. Yeah. You, don't, you think if you're tough, you don't need vulgarity. To, and so he said, coach, I would never let you down like that or myself down like that. And I believe him. So yeah. the reality is, is that was just a boob. They heard something from someone else and thought it was him. And so we get flagged. And it's the emotion. Hey, yeah. officials are people too, you know. Yeah. But the deal is this. That play, you, it, it wasn't a bad defensive play. It was bad defense allowing you to get that close to make that play. Yeah. But it wasn't a bad defensive play. That was just an amazing play by the VVS kids with no quit, all heart, trying to do battle to get to the dome like we were. So then, then, so you're going five minutes, twenty five seconds to go. You know they're within a touchdown. You know they could, they, they could make. So said, you really need a ball control drive, and you guys did that. You I mean you worked the clock well? They used their timeouts and worked the clock. Now it just got to a point where you almost, and you, you took that last time. I, I kind of said, well, they they could take another two knees and get out of this without and give the ball up. But it, it was just we weird couldn't. enough. It was just weird enough. And so you said, well, we got to go for it. And then so Sam, you know, got that two yard run with forty three seconds left, which which sealed it because. I, I even if you had given the ball like the one or two yard line with the way they were throwing right. the way Wheeler and Palmer can go, I, I, I the other thing you want to see is the ninety eight yard touchdown pass without yep. which they yep. were, would be capable of with their, sure. with their talent. Sure. So sure. you didn't want to see. There's nobody on the field as good as number twenty two for VVS talent wise, yeah. and effort and energy and ad- you put it all together that package. He was the best football f- player on the field that night, and uh, the only guy you might be able to say. Um, could compete with that is probably Sam Sorensen. Um, but that, that night, Delaney was the MVP of the game, even though they lost, in my opinion, as a head coach, looking at football through all these years. I will say this. you got to give credit to George Snyder, David Pasedlik, and Tom Cottrell. The reality is this. When we, were, we got that possession and they wanted to take a knee, I said, guys, understand, we cannot. They have one timeout. We can't run the clock out. We cannot run the clock out taking a knee. So... What they came up with is, Coach, let's make them use their timeout. Let's go down, make them use their timeout. Let's take a knee a couple times. We'll use a timeout with one second, and then we'll make a decision. we got to run a play. If we happen to stick it in, we will. But the reality is uh, they're not going to get the ball back. Um, or if they do, it's going to be for one Hail Mary play. And so that that was great thinking under the pressure of the moment by the entire staff uh, when they, you know, because I, they, I said, guys, just understand, we can't quite run it out taking a knee. So we got to have, and that's when George and, and David and Tom, who all talked to each other on the headsets, they said, here's what we should do, coach. And I said, you guys are on the mark. I'll keep my nose out of it. And they did an amazing job of working that clock down to next to nothing. And, uh, you know, that's, that's a pretty thing. I mean, that's just, those are the things that folks never, you never know if you'll ever get into that situation, even if you coach for 20 years and, and the experience of those guys and the, and the positive communication under the stress of the moment really came through for us. And, <laughs> I, you know, like, what more can you say? I mean, I'll talk, I'll talk, I'll talk about VGS a little bit again. Like we said, again, uh, you know, the quarterback, Whitman. The ball only hit the ground once in the 14 pass attempts. 12 of them he completed. 12 for 14 for 100, 269 yards and a four touchdown. You mean as opposed to two for 14 in game two. Right. And you know, one didn't hit the ground because that was the interception. The first one he threw was the interception, but then he completed. You go, that, you, he completes after that. He completes 12 out of 13 passes. Yes. And, I mean, and uh, again, Palmer was, you know, their lead, had nine of those catches for 199 yards where, again, 
very efficient uh, passing game by Jake. Uh, two, two, two for four for 18 yards there, just kind of thrown in there. But again, it was 69 yards on the ground, 69 carries last night. And uh, yeah, how you know, many plays did we run? I forgot. 60, uh, 73 all Pushing 70. 73 yep, yep, altogether. Yep. And that was the first game, same thing. We were like 66 or 68 yeah. plays in that one. And how many did they run? They ran, uh, let's see, it was. Less. Yeah, they ran less. It was. Because uh, they had the bigger plays. 22 and 30, so that's like 36. They ran 36 plays. That was the big di- difference again. It was not, not so much the number of plays, but they were, they were a quick strike. Right. But again, it was a ball pitch. And the, fi- the first game, you held the ball 37 minutes. This game, you guys had the ball 33 of the 48 right. minutes again, so you had the ball more. But Thus, Jake is two for four passing. All Jake mm-hmm. Calibro is is a winner. Yeah. You know, he gets the big picture. He's a class act. Uh, he is our rock. He's our steadfast rock that says, you know what, what's most important is we as a team have fun doing the things right together to win. And and that's our recipe for success. It's not, you know, it's a no-brainer when you look at the makeup of our team. And, again, they ran for 178 yards, and of which 120 of them went to Mr. Wheeler on my stash. Right, they had right. it for a few more, but our, the yard, the total yards was about the same. Yeah, I mean, the kid over 150 reporting. receiving yards against in high school, yep. I mean, it, in this, I mean, that's impressive. I will tell you, you look at Whitman, number 10. I liken it, you remember our Marcellus game, don't you? <laughs> we scored 41 points in the first quarter. Well, guess why? Because we had practiced for three weeks, and we had two quarters of game play against Cortland. So we came out so hungry to play. That young man hurt his knee against Fonda Fultonville. Uh, one of his teammates got thrown into his leg, and so he came back this week. He was hungry to enjoy the moment. And, and, and again, with him, he's a senior. He knew, and, and it just shows you the power of emotion. You know, instead of being 2 for 14 or 15, I think it was 2 for 14 in the first game. You know, he was, uh, he was what, 12 for 14 this week. Yeah. And, and it just shows you that... You know, the, 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 a kid who's got talent and a kid who's got a positive attitude said, I am going to cherish the opportunity I got, and he did. They just did a great job. Yeah. Well, we uh, mentioned, we, we said he wasn't, in the pregame, we said he wasn't most likely going to play, and then all of a sudden, but yeah, like you said, that, that, that power of a senior mm-hmm. in, that, in that game he knew they needed, uh, he, I can't, come on, he played like an all-star. But I, I, guess, I, I had thought about saying to the team, understand if there's any way number 10 can come back. He will, and I didn't say that to the team during the week, but at the same time, once I saw him warming up and saw he might play, I said, guys, just understand. We're prepared. Uh, we played him week two. We know who he is. We know what this team is. Uh, what they did is threw the ball effectively so they didn't go to the Wildcat like they did the week before, and, and uh, we had to prepare for that because, you know, if he didn't play, that was going to be the core of their offense, uh, but because he did play, they went back to their mix of pass and run. Um, what a great one-two punch with number one and number 22 to catch the ball, number one to run it. Um, Wheeler. Wheeler will be back next year. He's yeah. a junior, so so that's a real bright spot for them. But, uh, you know, definitely uh, an exciting affair. And that, like you said, that QB, you know, good for him. I'm, I'm thankful we won, but he had nothing to be ashamed of walking off that field. Well, he we said 69 carries on the ground, 493 yards rushing, and uh, – Everybody kept going, oh, man, Homer's offense will, you know, suffer. And we've talked every week, well, it's been a kind of tailback by committee, fullback by committee, whatever needed to get the do- job done. Well, all you did is give the Sammy Sorensen the ball 30 times. He's going for 226 yards and six touchdowns. That gives him uh, 14 touchdowns the last three games, 12 rushing into two on def- defense. Yeah, defense, yeah, pick six in the, in the so, fumble, so like, scoop and so score. The offense hasn't struggled too much without uh, Logan, but uh, mm-hmm. Sammy stuck up. David Morris, you know, before, you know, even though he got dinged up there at the end, 18 carries for uh, 104 yards, got a couple touchdowns. Um, that guy, I thought, made, well, three guys, other guys made the difference. They had a combined 18 carries. Uh, Andrew Lynch, seven carries, 56 yards. Uh, Will Dady, five carries for 24 yards. And uh, Hunter Reelman, six carries for 81 yards. They all made a difference. So those guys threw uh, together a nice number of yards between them behind what David and uh, Sammy did. Look at what you said. We have five significant ball carriers, and we, we rush for 500 yards, so an average of 100 per guy. Um, and the truth is, again, this is a team that's bought into the team concept, and this is a team that knows like Will Dady. In the spring, you talk about leadership, and that's why it's cool he got an honor this week. You talk about leadership. Will Dady is a center in the spring because we have to have a center because our center, unfortunately, couldn't play in the spring season. Will Dady is a tight end, always will be. 
well, Will Dady's in tight end all season. Well, suddenly we have some, you know, we lose Logan. We have some other issues in the backfield with health. And there's Will Dady playing fullback for us. He doesn't care. Coach, tell me what we need. I'm going to do my best I can to get it right. And, and that's why we're going to the Dome to play for our second major goal, the Section 3 crown, because of the unselfish attitude of our, our team from top to bottom. And that's got to continue if we're going to find a way to beat New Hartford. And like we said early in the season, two ga- couple games in, you know, after that VVS game, you know, you got Logan Peck with 391 yards, you know, leading the team with rushing. Now the team, and I can't, I, I don't think number, I can't, I didn't figure out the numbers without him in the lineup, but to date, 2,900 yards even now on the ground. Um, in eight games. In eight games. David Moore, 72 carries, 729 yards, averaging just over 10 a carry. Sam Sorensen, 76 carries. 724 yards, nine and a half yards, pretty much a clip. So you've got two guys, conceivably, if they could have a good game against New Hartford and, you know, on a win, get to a regional game, a couple games, two guys, are, you know, are within 250 yards of 1,000-yard seasons if you can make it past the regionals or get to the regionals. That's, that's just amazing considering everybody was talking about how Logan's going to be the big guy. You could technically, there's two guys that could hit 1,000 yards, maybe. I, I've, I've had the privilege of being around a long time. I'm going to tell you, and I am convinced, uh, he was a first-team All-CNY in the spring. He would have been a first-team All-State kid in the spring if we had such a thing. Uh, Logan Peck, hell, if he had uh, not suffered his misfortune, the reality is he, the, I would find it difficult for people to not agree at every level of football that he is the All-CNY football player of the year. That's how much talent and, and ability and, and uh, effort he put forth on the game field, you know. Um, and we don't have that guy. And a lot of teams would say, oh, what are we going to do, you know. And we just said no, uh, you know, the Jake Plunkett theory. This is the ultimate team game. And with the ultimate team game, if you are sincere in your belief in that, you can overcome anything. And our players, thanks to their effort, we're overcoming a lot of things and we're doing a great job. And it would be really cool to see those guys. Wouldn't it be nice to have a couple 1,000-yard rushers? I mean, 2,900 yards in an eight-game season? I don't care what level of football you are. Unless you're playing eight games and seven of them against awful opponents that doesn't happen right. so uh great job by the players and and our offensive staff and our whole staff uh you know jim Wooden running that scout team each week so our linemen know who to block how to adjust to stunts how to adjust to line slanting you know you can they jump around as linebackers we don't do that a lot we don't dance and and try to you know intimidate with movement um that team did so coach Wooden's putting together that scout defense for us and uh, it just makes for exciting football for us. And of course, Bryson, uh, Bryce Hoffman. Hey, I get to I get to be a kickoff man. And again, there was some depth on the kickoffs all night. So yes, he felt like it's kind of fun. Dude, that's the only thing we anybody kind of wonder. Well, he kicks that good. Why wasn't why why wasn't he kicking extra points here and there or trying one? But I, I guess that is it's, it's well. Dalton Dalton is going to be our PAT kicker. Be field goal. Yeah, I mean Dalton hit one in practice the other day. That if we had lined it up, it was like a. If I remember right, it was like a 28-yarder, but it would have been good from 40, you know. So he's getting better and better and better. We just felt we were going to need so many points the other night, and we felt like in the worst scenario, if we're 50% or slightly over, we have more points than we would kicking 100%. And that puts the pressure on the coaches when you go for two. It's a fault of the coaches if we don't convert. The missed kick could could be the fault of the kicker. And so when you're given the choice to make the tough decision and the harsh reality be in the kid's head or in our head it's, it's our job to assume that responsibility so that was the mindset because we knew vvs was a talented team a lot like us um we knew there were going to be a lot of points scored so we needed all the points we could get but bryce hoffman he had he had that injury where he'd broken his leg uh in a couple places and had to be rebuilt in the spring and lacrosse season and he came back unbelievable i mean he was committed all summer he was even with a scooter and a boot on he was lifting weights with his upper body and and doing one-legged bike work and things to to get himself in shape for the football season and the minute he got released well he hurt his thigh just prior to getting released he'd come down on his own to kick and he'd hurt his thigh and so um we we consulted the training staff and the doctors and they said ideally because that's such a strenuous activity when you rip your leg through you're pulling on that thigh muscle they said let's get him playing football on on both sides of the ball because that's the kind of kid you're telling us he is and then give him two to three weeks we could have started kicking him a week ago it was on me i i didn't really 
say, coaches, let's do it until it was Wednesday of last week, and I said, two weeks ago. And I said, no, we're not going to put him in that spot. Let's do it. We'll make the commitment for the, for the semifinals. He's going to be, if he can do it, he's going to be our kickoff guy. And, uh, and that gives us some, some, you know, some depth in the kicking game. So, yeah, we'll take it. And defensively, rather interest, interestingly enough, too, and a lot of it wasn't, you know, you, 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 you know, we've been talking about how many tackles Taven's been having the last few games. I mean, he's been a dominant defensive guy. And, and I can't, Hoffman, you know, since he's been back and some of those guys. It's been interesting. There's several times they had guys, you know, they had Palmer in the backfield or, Paul, or uh, Wheeler in the backfield, and their, just their ability to cut and move, you yes. know, avoided yards for loss. So when you look at the final, the balancing, Hunter Reelman had uh, five total tackles in the game. So that's mm-hmm. you know, something we haven't seen a lot. Hunter this year, a lot of them. Uh, Sammy, of course, five again being a linebacker. Tyler Reelman, seven overall tackles left yep. for, in the game, and uh, Will Deedy with six. So yeah, and Zach Arnold some, with six, some, yeah. Some different yep. guys. And, uh, yep. yeah, Zach, yeah, Zach Arnold in there with six all together. I mean, that was – so different names because they were getting into that second level. But, I did, you know, everybody else, like you say, it's not to, okay, maybe it's not going to be the linemen this week. It's going to be more of the linebackers and maybe the secondary guys, and they all stepped up. And, you know, we, we, we'll talk often and say, hey, you know how you have a great tackling football team? You have great athletes. You know, you have better athletes than the other team, so you can tackle. You don't miss, you know. Well, that team, like us, had a lot of talented kids on the field who can make people miss, even good people miss. There, we had our film for an hour and a half like we always do on Saturday. You know, we train from 9 to 10. We get inside by 10.30 after we work out outside, loosen the body up, do some hurdle and ball security work. We go to the weight room. We get that done to start healing the muscles. And then we're upstairs after we clean up. Um, you know, we even have these, because they can't shower with the COVID thing, we have these body wipes the AD bought. That They're a great product. Uh, wrestling teams, it was a product that wrestling teams use all the time. The minute a kid comes off the mat, they'll use it, and if, if he's going to go back on, and then that way you're less likely to have any issues with germs and things like that. Um, we try to be seated, uh, donuts and juice or milk or cider in hand, and taking notes, our notebooks are open, and, and by 10.40, we want to be taking notes, and then we go to 11.50 with film, um, and then we do our Blue Collar Awards and a brief, uh, really brief scouting report and a real brief hey, plan on this for this week's practice time frames, and uh, we do that, so the hour and a half we had yesterday, there were probably at least five or six plays, we had them dead to rights in the backfield or behind the line scrimmage for loss, and all of them turned into double-digit gains. Because a good player made a good play, good move, and we missed. And we've got to stop that. The good news is almost every case, we talk about a a target, whether you're blocking on the line of scrimmage, as you come out of your stance, or if you're a running back, if you haven't found the butt cheek of the offensive player you're supposed to attack at the line of scrimmage when you're going to get a handoff, if you don't do that, bad things happen. And in virtually every missed tackle, you can see the focal point isn't what we teach. What you're supposed to look at on the guy with the ball, it, what they got careless. We got careless. And, and the, the good news is the guy's like, Coach, if we just do what we've practiced all year, we tackle those kids for loss. Okay, problem's fixed. Now let's do it this week. Let's make it happen in practice so the muscle memory's there so it happens in the game. And uh, so hopefully we'll improve on our tackling behind the line of scrimmage this week. Well, we get, we cover cover a little bit of everything here. Like I said, we spent 15 minutes just talking about uh, sportsmanship and all other yeah, things. But yeah. which, what, 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 like I said, there no slams on anybody there. It was just no, a, it was a great games. high school hard nosed football oh, game. The way it went, and uh, now we said it's the. Uh, I almost can call it the home jersey for Homer. They're going to throw the whites on to go to the dome, and uh, right, you had a very good, you know, very good record with a white jersey on in the dome overall. So I mean, that's. that's that's not the bad thing to wear the white jersey. No, uh, no. And it's going to be fun because it'll be a 3 o'clock kickoff on Saturday in the yeah, Dome. Kind of a primetime game. New Hartford hasn't been there in 13 years, mm-hmm. so you know they're going to be jacked up sure. there to go. It's not, it's not, yeah, it's not going to be a Kaz. It's, it's the Trojans gonna, and the Spartans, it's right? Not, not, not VVS. It's not Kaz. Yep. The Dome, like you said, it's going to be New Hartford. You know, a new face that has waited 13 years to yes. get there. So uh should be a lot of fun on Saturday. You know, Coach Kramer and his staff have done an amazing job since he came out of the college ranks to come back to his hometown area. Um, you know, he was an Oneida guy. Great. We, I got to coach against him when he was a player. And uh, he, he and his staff have done a tremendous job. they got a lot of experience on their staff uh, at, at multiple levels. And because of that, you know, you can see how their team has done what ours has. It's bought into the big picture. Uh, you know, they, they've bought into the fundamentals. Without fundamentals, I don't care if you're talented. Without fundamentals, 
that'll be the difference in a game you lose you shouldn't. So uh, they're doing a great job over there. I'm, I'm hoping it's half the game it should be because the reality is is that, uh, again, nice senior class over there. This should be a rematch. We should have been playing for the Section 3 crown in the 2020 season, but then this silly COVID thing hit. And it's not silly. It's a serious thing, but it hit. And we, I was thankful as a coach for my senior class of 2021 that they got a season, a half a season, because it would have been sad for them to never get on the field because everybody knew. Everybody knew going into 2020, barring some tragedy or a massive code violation within the school, New Hartford and Homer were going to play in the Dome for the sectional crown in 2020. It didn't happen, but it's kind of okay that here we go. We're going to go at it and see what happens in 2021, you know. So I'm happy for our players and their players, and this should be an exciting Class B football game. And, of course, we'll have more of a uh, pregame look uh, coming up on Thursday with, about, about that game. And, of course, and we'll talk about their outstanding. They got a stud runner, too. So, Two of them. <laughs> so, so we'll get the thought of that on uh, Thursday as we do our uh, pregame show for the uh, trip to the Dome. So, uh, again, Coach, congratulations. A uh, semifinal win, uh, you know, 62-49 over VVS. Two wins over VVS in the same year, which will, if it ever happens again, will be nice. But it's not something you, that's not a norm either. So nope. we'll take it. And uh, Well, think about it. We've beat them the last three times we've played them. Uh, two of the three have been playoff games. And uh, we, we've only beat them four times. They've beat us seven in the history of the two schools. So uh, we got a ways to go, but we don't worry about that stuff now. I mean, we just worry about New Hartford, and uh, we're looking forward to the week of practice. All right. And with that said, that'll do it for this edition of Trojan Football Talk. Today's show brought to you by American Credit Union for every day for everything. Located next to Little Caesars at 3944 Route 281 in Cortland. By the Cortland Voice, the exclusive media partner of Trojan Football Talk. For all your local news and sports in Cortland County at no cost to you, check out CortlandVoice.com. By the Royal Auto Group on Route 281 in Cortland, the home of no hassle, no razzle-dazzle. Check them out at RoyalAutoGroup.com. By Yeaman Real Estate at the entrance to Yeaman Park off I-81, exit 11 in Cortland. By DJ Philly C. Make your wedding, party, or event extra special with the best DJ in the area. Contact DJ Philly C. at 607-745-4346. By Nikki C.'s Hometown Pizzeria and Meatball Shop on Route 281 next to Hobo's in Homer. Find them online for fast, secure ordering or call 607-749-5300. They have a unique menu with dietary specific options. Nikki C.'s your grab-and-go specialists. By Graftex, located on Elm Street in Cortland, founded in 1984, they provide custom screen printing and embroidery for teams and local businesses. Graftex continues its dedication to servicing customer needs for innovative graphic designs, custom imprinted apparel, and quality service. They are easy to contact at 1-800-417-7791. By Seven Valley Agency at 18 Tompkins Street in Cortland for all your personalized insurance services. Give them a call at 607-753-1821. Or check them out online at sevenvalleyagency.com. Seven Valley Agency, where your money matters, our advice counts. By Isaac Merker Studio, handling all your photographic needs in central New York since 1982 at 74 Hamlin Street in Cortland. Give them a call at 607-756-0849 or check them out online at isaacmerker.com or on Facebook. M&D Deli, located on Central Avenue in Cortland, is open Monday through Fridays from 7 a.m. to 3 p.m. M&D has breakfast sandwiches, bakery items, and daily lunch specials. They are also available for catering. Check out their Facebook page for more information. Stop by or call 607-753-TO-GO. That's 753-8646. And look for their new food truck in the spring of 2022. By Crop Growers, LLP, the first choice in crop insurance located in Homer. Contact KC Slade at 607-591-2460 for more information. And by the First National Bank of Dryden at 12 South Main Street in Homer. Safe, secure, and locally owned for all your banking needs. For more information, stop by, call 607-662-4179, or check them out online at drydenbank.com. So from our guest, Gary Pasilic, and yours truly, Tom Vartani, thanks for listening. We'll talk to you again as we head to the Dome, and we'll talk to you again soon.